Hello and welcome back. Um, we're uh, back to do the, to the uh, second and final coat or the fourth coat if you can count the two primer coats to this um, previously varnished trim here. Um, so now there's, there's two coats of primer on it and one top coat. Um, so it's basically smooth um, but at this point since there's three coats on it or one one top coat on, on top of the two primers it's much more safe if you have to sand now but you don't really want to sand that hard and you shouldn't be, 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 because we strained our paint and uh, we sanded from like the get-go so but if you had to go around and make if you saw a hole and you filled that hole just use like a fine fine sanding pads as to not gouge into the previous layers because this hasn't fully cured yet um, and it's a latex paint so it's going to remain soft for for like a for at least a month here um, and this is the filler that i use to fill the uh, nail holes and this is just re regular all-purpose joint compound here um, and again this stuff does shrink so it's important to do at least two coats to account for the shrinkage so that you end up with this smooth surface. Um, and then this is what I put in my paint. It's called Floetrol and it helps to eliminate brush and roller marks. It's basically a conditioner for latex paints so that it cuts the surface friction and it helps the, the paint spread out a lot easier um, then if you didn't use this, so this just helps, um, it extends the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, wet time of, of the paint, which is always important, especially with a latex paint, because a lot of times latex paints, they set up and dry so fast that all those brush marks that you created are now locked into the finish. So this just, it extends the uh, dry time so that gravity will help uh, bring down all the brush strokes so that you end up with an even, uh, you end up with an even film of paint that is on the substrate. So I'm going to put this down here and once again I'm going to grab my paint set set up here and again I'm using a two and a half inch brush here and you can see my paint in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply the third coat and once again I'm going to start on this inside edge here. So I'm going to load up the paint there and I'm going to transfer the brush to my left hand here. And since I have a lot of paint out of here, I'm not going to come close to the corner. So I'll start in the middle there. And now I'll work it into the corner and pull down. Okay, now I'll spread this paint out here. Now, since this is the fourth coat, the paint is going to apply much easier than it did on the first three. So I'm gonna come down here now and come back into it and pull down and it's nice to to get to the final coat because the paint will just it spreads on much easier okay now i'm going to feather this going back into what i did there now i'm going to come over here and look at this here um, i'm going to put more paint here Feather that off down and go like that. And that looks good there. So now we're left with this edge here. Now there is a little bit of paint that's on this edge from me coming down like that. But it's fine because we're going to hit this here now. So you can see the amount of paint that I have on my brush there. I'm just going to slowly just add like a little bit more to the tip there. Now I showed you the technique of going like this, okay? But if you, there's another te 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 technique, you just 
put it on that side right there and go down with it. Okay. Now, as you can see, I just caught a, a line probably like a halfway into this one inch edge here, um, where it's not like one inch, but I covered a half it. So now what I'm gonna do with the brush kind of clean, cleaned off, I'm gonna come back into it, go into the corner and pull down. Okay, so that's your, so I, I just cut a perfectly straight line down the wall, it didn't get any on to this wall that much. I just cut over the caulk line, so I'm gonna just gonna clean up this side here. And now I'm gonna load up a little bit here, and we're gonna come down here, and I'm, and I'm gonna finish bringing this down here. So with, with a little bit of paint on my brush here, I stopped right there, so I'm gonna come into it there, go halfway down, we'll come into the bottom, and go halfway up and now we'll come back into it there and work it into that corner there and just go down with it there and for this I'll just come up there and I'll do this one more time again there and I'll come into it and brush where I went into it out there so I'm just going to clean up the face of this right here and then come down there and if you get any on the bottom here, just fan this out real quick so that it doesn't dry fast. But when you're painting, you won't be talking like I am, so you'll, you'll go a lot quicker. Um, so, that, so that takes care of that. Now I'm gonna, we're going to come up here to uh, paint the top here. Okay, so that's like that. Work it into the corner and pull across there. Come into this corner, pull across. Now I'm kind of having trouble hitting like the very top of this, so I'm just gonna do this technique here. And then I'll clean that up by just going on slightly on top of it, so that'll take care of any drips there. Work it into the corner, kind of come across there, over here, start on 45, and go back into what I did there. And always look back at your work. Okay, so, again, over here, I'm going to paint this inside edge here first. So, I'll put the paint there, trying to brush around, and go up there. Work it into the corner and come down with it. Into the corner, go up, do that again, and come up with that. So that takes care of that edge. I'll reload the brush here and come into the middle here. And then what you can do is, as you can see, it spreads the paint out to the left and to the right of this centerpiece. And it just spreads it out in a neat fashion. Um, okay, so that takes care of that. If you get any paint here, just again, fan this out here. Okay, and now we're gonna paint this right-hand side edge here. So, again, I'm gonna load up the brush, just like a little bit of paint there, and I'm just going to come into this edge here and I'm going to release the paint halfway to like the wall there. Now I'll, I'll uh, kind of clean off some paint on that edge there and we'll come back into this and work it and come down. Oops. Now there was too much that started to uh, beat up there so with the brush cleaned off I'll come back into it and kind of just drag this down there um, and come down here I'm going to clean the brush off onto the face of this to get rid of the paint and come into this 
and come down there like that. Okay, now I'll come back to the face and feather off that there. Okay, so where that area was where there's a lot of paint, I just got rid of the paint and then I grabbed it again and brought it back, back down there. So now we're going to come down here to this ledge here. And feather that off there. For this front hand side, I'm just going to do this technique here. And then feather that off there. Come down here. Get this underside edge here. And feather that across there. And I'm just gonna take a look to see if there's any drip marks or whatnot. Everything looks good. I'm gonna come over here because I and then hit this side here. I'm just going to come into it and then come down right there. And I'll do the same thing for this side over here. Okay, and always just go back and take a look at your work. Uh, just look for any drips or uh, whatnot. Um, you won't, since, 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 since I caulked it twice, there really aren't any areas or gaps where the paint can form in and then it'll start to drip. So that's a good thing about caulking too, is that you don't have any of those gaps where you can get a lot of the paint into where once you paint it and then, and then you move on and then you look back at it a minute later, you can see it start to sag out of that, out of, out of that gap. So. That's why it's very important to caulk, not only for an aesthetic re re reason, but so that when it, so that when you go to paint, it just makes painting a lot easier. Um, so I'll just put this down here. Um, so that's gonna wrap 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 up this uh, this project about how to paint a previously varnished or stained in varnished surface. So again, some very important points to remember is that you're is that you're painting on top of that polyurethane, and you have to you have to either scuff it up or use a liquid degloss or or even both, so that your primer coat will in fact bond to that slippery surface. Um, because if you just try just to put paint on it, it's not going to stick, and if you hit it with your thumbnail. Or if you try to put like a, a cup on like a ledge, it'll just it'll tear right off. So it's very important to uh, do all the prep work that I explained to you, so that your end result will uh, look like this. Now, if if you do try to do it freehand, like like I did, and if you get any on like the wall, or if you went like too far and you're not ha happy with it, it's always going to look best. If uh, if you cut the walls in last, but I just wanted to show you this technique so that if for some reason you're not going to paint the walls, then this is a way to go to get a straight line on on uh, on just on the edge of the wall where the caulk meets the wall, um, and 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 again, it's it's always going to look best if you cut the walls in last, but again, I just wanted to show you how I can um, how I can paint the trim and not use tape, and but, but also get a straight line down when I cut down the caulk line without making, a me without making a huge mess on like the wall. So I hope you enjoyed these series of videos and uh, I'll see you on the next one. So until then, 